and welcome to In Retrospection, the show where we review the retro today. I am Joshua Caleb, and joining me once again is Zach Williamson. Ooh. And also joining us from the field where he is doing some incognito footwork is Joel Brodsky. It was apparently somewhere where it's very windy. I'm in the middle of a tornado. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you He's sure? in a tornado of classic gaming. Yeah, we, we actually sort of have him for real this time instead of just in spirit. Though, since, since he's undercover, he may not be talking much. So you have to make sure to be quiet so we don't blow his cover. All right, so today we are going to be covering a smattering of platforming games. Starting with probably the first, at least major, platformer. This might be the most vile, evil game of all time. And why is that? This game is absolutely impossible to win. It is designed oh. <laughs> to be impossible to win. Yeah, I don't... I may have gotten past the first level. I don't think I've gotten any further than that. And that was even on and that was on the NES version. The average full game with all three lives of Donkey Kong lasts, from what I'm told, less than thirty seconds. Wow. And because of the way it, because of the nature of it being timed, it eventually gets faster and faster and faster and gives you less and less time until eventually it literally kills you off. Um, there's actually a story, uh, there's a movie called The King of Kong. A fist yeah. Hello. Oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, you were saying? He, uh, it's, it's the story of this guy that held the record forever, and he, uh, he got challenged by this underdog, and now this guy has the record. Um, matter of fact, every year at E3, um, the guy's name is Steve Weeby, and there's a Weeby watch every year at E3 to see if he can conquer his previous high score, and he is the official world record holder for Donkey Kong. Um, and it, it's actually is, is that one the King of Kong? One that's the jerk? No, no. Weeby's the good guy. The other one's the jerk. Um, let me see. Uh, what's his name? Uh, da, 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 da. Billy Mitchell's the guy that's the jerk. Right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah, I I am a firm believer that Donkey Kong may be the most vile, evil game of all time. But it's so addictive. Well, yeah, I think it was actually sort of the Nintendo first made it. They were originally going to make a um, Popeye game. But they couldn't lock down the rights to that. Yeah. So then they decided they they took sort of inspirations. I think like I said from like Beauty and the Beast, or they wanted some sort of love triangle between this plumber, this big monkey, and this girl. Because that all makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
Well, it's it's every guy's dream to be caught in a love triangle with a giant monkey and a girl. I've lived that. See? See? You know what I mean, Joel. <laughs> yeah, and everything's fine until the giant monkey decides to kidnap the girl and start throwing barrels at you from the top of a construction building or something. That sounds like something that happened to you in college, Joel. High school. Oh, wow. You got started early with your monkey and adventures. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that th here, though. <laughs> no, uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of the other games that this sort of in a roundabout way inspired the main character. Well, that's obviously Mario, but he actually wasn't called Mario. In this, he was just um, referred to as Jumpman. Jumpman. Which is a very original name. It is. It's true. I came up with it myself. Did you like it? Yeah. I mean, it, convey, it conveys what it, exactly what he does. See, so he lives up to his name. But then he he eventually had to get a real name and start his own series. This game is the first video game I ever played. I think it was for me too. That was I got a the Nintendo at a pawn shop and I think then Super Mario Brothers cartridges were like a dime a dozen. I remember I was three years old and I taught my mother how to play this video game and I was so proud because I taught my mom how to do something. And I absolutely just... Wow. Yeah, I... I'm apparently just old. <laughs> you are, Grandpa. It's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I actually kind of remember when I used to have this game. Uh, and I think that there was one point, which this is my parents and everyone still talk about this, but... And I kind of remember it, that when I was like five or even younger, I got up in the middle of the night, went out, and actually hooked up the Nintendo to the TV and started playing this. And like, I don't think anyone had ever actually showed me how to hook up a Nintendo to a TV, and I just sort of figured it out. And I started playing this in the middle of the night. And if I'm vaguely remembering correctly, I actually got quite far. My god, this is just... Calm down, Zach. <laughs> it's just it's such a happy occasion. Once again, I, I asked, do you need tissues? I have a box. <laughs> I'm just so happy. I, it really is, though. It, it's It's amazing to see not only where we come from, I mean, how far we've come, but you look at games like this, and at the time, at the time of their release, this was a big deal. This was intense. Oh, yeah. Because well, it had, like, um, what was it, eight different worlds, each with four unique levels. There were boss fights. You had power-ups you could get. There was tons of secrets and hidden areas that were like completely invisible. You almost had to know they were there or just happen upon them by accident. And even the music is Oh yeah. Incredible. I mean wow. And the oh, keeper of the uh, the dates, what what year did this come out? This was I if I if I have my dates right I want to say this was February of 1985. I want to say, but yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say 85 too. Yeah, 1985. Um, 
Oh no, the the actual release was September of '85. Um, the Japan original release was September 13th of 1985. North America it was released in November of 1985. So it was near the tail end for us. That sounds about right. I was uh, almost out of junior high heading into high school. castles were actually quite advanced like the one that had the infinite loop that if you didn't oh where you have to go along certain paths yeah if you didn't take the correct top bottom or middle path you would keep going in an infinite loop so you had to figure out which was the right one Oh yes, and remember when boss fights, uh, all they involved were running across a bridge and hitting a switch? Oh man. And the one thing that everybody hated, uh oh, you found the princess. <laughs> She's in another castle. You gotta, you gotta keep stringing you along. I'm telling you. I, I think she was just, just playing, I think she was just playing hard to get. You think it's so? just like real life. <laughs> yep. Alright, so move on to a another famous Nintendo franchise that I think was probably equally as advanced for its time. This was a very odd kind of game in that you played as like a literal puffball. It's the story of my life. <laughs> I'm still playing as a puffball. And I just eat everything. It's the schmoo. You Kirby guys was probably my don't hero. remember that. You just you just walk around and just swallow everything. Nom 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 nom. Yeah, it does. What, this was, was this one of the first games where you could actually take on the abilities of your enemies? I think it was. I think Kirby actually was the, the, the franchise that started that. Yeah, he, he just swallows them up and digests them, and now he has their powers. So you are um, what you um, eat. Um, power. He, he can also swallow air and fly. Wish I could just swallow air and fly. I can just swallow air and burp. That's still a skill, though, right? Yeah, sure. Levels are pretty, were kind of short, though. And I guess some, some of the levels on Super Mario Brothers were pretty short. Yeah, this actually had an overworld, kind of like um, Zelda. Yeah. Sort of, sort of interesting. I had a little overworld that would have like mini games or little secrets you could find and play. All oh, the mini games were so much fun. This game had every element that I love. It had included, it included epic cute, it included food, it included eating people out of spite. I mean, there's nothing about this game that I didn't like. Yeah, I'm surprised Kirby hasn't come out with a cooking game. That's sort of become his signature. He's crazy about food. 
That's true. I mean, of course, he would just probably swallow the ingredients whole anyway. Yeah, I mean, he swallowed blocks, the wooden blocks whole. What, you don't swallow wooden blocks whole? <laughs> no, they, they tend to give me an indigestion. Oh, yeah. I've built up a tolerance. Yeah, so that would be kind of nice though. If there's just a, if a wall or obstacles in your way, you just swallow it. Oh yes, and the ability to swallow projectiles and throw them back at your opponent. The swallow bomb. See, until this, I think that was something only Superman could do. Kirby taught us all that if we just eat, we'll uh, we can make it through life a lot easier. Should we, should we move on to one of my personal favorite platforming franchises? Oh, that yes. It actually makes me kind of sad when I think about it now. I think this was also one of the first games that I had. I think. When I had this, when I had the Nintendo, I was uh, always drooling over the Sega Genesis and the Sonic the Hedgehog games, but they're always too expensive. To me, that, that was it redefined the platforming genre, and so that you, you can have platformers that are like fast. You know, I, I, I know game. we'll, I know we'll cover it on our Super Sonic episode, but. Man, there was one game in this franchise that no one could ever find. I, it took me, um, I guess, about 10 years. No, longer than that, because I just got it last year sometime to find a used copy of this game, but Sonic Spinball. Joel, do you remember that? I had Sonic Spinball. Sonic did you really, Spin you little brat? Yes, was that I the did. pinball game? Yeah. I, had... I, I remember playing it. At one point I had, I think, Sonic 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, Spinball. I think I may even had the Mean Bean Machine. Oh, and 3D Blast. I had 3D Blast. So, yeah, 3D I think Blast I've, was cool. I think I've owned about every Sonic game except for the um, spin-off or the miscellaneous console ones that never really took off. Well, those don't really count anyway. <laughs> Yeah, those, those, as far are, those as the are our Genesis, bastard children. Yeah, the, the Genesis ones, I think I owned every one of them. I didn't own Spinball or Mean Bean Machine. I think those are the only ones I didn't own. And Mean Bean Machine never appealed to me. But Spinball, that one escaped my grasp for yeah, well, ages. That, that one was pretty cool. We'll definitely cover that on our Sonic episode. But yeah, I think the Sonic games actually took the the spotlight away from Mario for a time. Because for one, it was on the Sega Genesis, and Sega was always first to the market with their new platforms. So I think they always beat Nintendo to the punch with the new graphics and capabilities. So they had that going. And plus the fact that this was a really cool action platformer that you could move God. almost at the speed of sound. Well, he was Sonic. Yeah. God rest the soul of the Dreamcast, by the way. Yeah, that, that was probably the... I, I actually enjoyed the Sonic Adventure game, despite its utter brokenness. Oh, it, it was. It was it was awful. This game was so glitchy, but it was so good. The, this first Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. All 
right, should we... The, 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 the Sonic, I think, also started the um, animal mascot craze. Yeah, and before I cry over Sonic, let's keep going. Well, next game is another lesser-known animal mascot. Crash? Uh, nope. No. But this one I had actually never heard of until recently. I remember playing Arrow the Acrobat. Don't remember it. It was sort wow. of an interesting spin on the platforming genre. Kind of, none of the other platformers really had like unique objective. It was just get to get from point A to point B as fast as possible. This one actually added various objectives you had to complete. Which most of them I see that they were weren't exactly very interesting. Like you're just supposed to jump on seven star platforms or find a key or do something like that. It really gave platformers objectives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some of the um mechanics they used were kind of interesting with the circus theme. So I, I couldn't really get the hang of his um, sideways drill spin as his double jump, or even his attack. That, that always threw me off. Oh look, it's a member of the Insane Clown Posse. Yeah, that double jump was a tricky move to get down. It took me forever to master that on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, because that, that was like the only way you could reach some platforms, and you couldn't couldn't really... It was hard to judge its trajectory. I also, I kind of wish he had also a little hover ability, which is sort of cool. You'd like, fly in place for a couple seconds, but they wouldn't let you move while doing that, which... That would have been kind of nice. Yeah, I think they tried to capture some of the same coolness of Sonic. They tried to make him too cool, I think, was the problem, which is why this, this never got super popular. Yeah. Well, I think the, the other problem was just the source material of it being a circus. I mean... Well, that's true, too. So circuses are fine and cool, but they're not exactly... I don't know. It doesn't seem like a mainstream gamer thing. It's not conducive to a storyline. No. I think the storyline was basically just some rip-off on Mario and the whole Save the Princess thing. Yeah, this one along, I think, with just about every game we're covering today, you can get it on the Wii Virtual Console. It's like eight bucks. I'm not sure whether it's the Genesis or the Super Nintendo version. I can imagine it was the Super Nintendo version, although I don't think they were different. I think they were identical. I think they were too, though the, the, they had different soundtracks, which is sort of interesting. The Super Nintendo one, I think, uh, had better sound, but the music might have been cooler on the Genesis one. Yeah, that was the only difference, was the 
some of the musical differences between the two. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, continuing our animal mascot trend. And touching back on a previous subject. Yes, covered. Th this one actually took off quite well. This is probably one of my top five favorite Super NES games. Uh huh. And uh, this is also one probably one of my favorite video game intros. Oh, the the intro to this is just it's hysterical. I love it. Uh, oh, that's great. Well, and it even sort of it brought back the old Donkey Kong game because the Cranky Kong is sitting on a platform from the original Donkey Kong. And people, a lot of people don't realize this, but in the actual canon of the storyline, Cranky is the original Donkey Kong. Uh huh. And he he talks about that, you know, in his day they just they captured maidens and threw barrels at plumbers or something like that. And, not like this new fangled 16-bit stuff. It, it was also one of those games that they sort of broke that well, that fourth wall. In a way, yeah. There they, was there was a lot of interaction that you really didn't expect to happen. Yeah, they, they especially with Cranky, he continually referred to this adventure. You know, as a, he knew that it was a game, and that, you know, in my day we didn't have all these fancy 16-bit graphics and sound and one life and whatever was all you needed and. It definitely didn't take itself entirely seriously, which added to the appeal. Yeah, it no was. It was. It it had it its. Uh, it had fun at its own expense, but it was completely beneficial. Well, yeah, it helped with having those um, then groundbreaking pre-rendered CG graphics. Yeah, and I mean, you look at it, and man, the. The graphics for its time, holy mackerel. It was 3D on a Super NES. I mean, that's just unheard of. Yeah, and it wasn't the the vector graphic 3D from Star Fox that you know, we covered previously that, you know, look, it was cool and everything, but it was kind of, you know, it was kind of hard to get excited about it because there wasn't a lot of detail and it just looked like you were fighting with a bunch of asteroid type geometrical shapes so this was actually like um pixar level graphics i mean there were games there were games that and i understand that most of this is pre-rendered anyway but mm -hmm. there were games on the nintendo 64 that didn't look as good as donkey kong country did here on the super nes yeah, and even the, what they were able to do with the environments and the and stuff were was the first level you're going through, you know, it's all sunny and daylight, but then as you reach the end of the level, the sun starts to set in the background, everything gets dark, and then the next level, you're in a rainstorm and everything's raining and thundering and lightning, and then at the end, the sun comes out, the birds start chirping and stuff, and than this one. Or like, th yeah, like this one where you're in the middle of a blizzard. You know, it starts out fine, you, it gets darker, you get in the middle of this blizzard, you go through, and once you finally hit the the, uh, the end of the level, you, it's back yeah. to normal again. Yeah, and uh, when they, this game was actually, I think you saw a bit in the clip here, the game has been ported to just about every Nintendo console and handheld. And the, the, the Game Boy Color version obviously lost a lot in the translation, though they're actually able to keep it pretty well intact. And then they also ported it to the Game Boy Advance later, which they, they added a lot of details and Extra they added effects. a lot to the background that wasn't there before. Yeah, but I think it actually lost some of its atmosphere, some of the levels, like those background transitions in the atmosphere. I think they actually lost that. 
And if you play this on a larger screen, it, it's actually a lot blurrier and pixelated than the Super Nintendo original. Oh, yeah. And honestly, the, uh, the, the Wii remake, oh, man. The Donkey Kong Country Returns? Yes, that is an absolutely gorgeous game. Yeah, I'm I'm renting that. I'm definitely gonna play that. That looks pretty cool. All right. Well, this yeah, this this one you can get on the virtual console for like eight bucks or something. I mean, all the Super Nintendo and Genesis games on the Virtual Console are like eight bucks. Though oddly enough, that Sonic the Hedgehog, if you get that on Xbox, PlayStation, or Steam, it's only five bucks. That's right. And matter of fact, um, Sonic One, Two, Three, Sonic and Knuckles, and then there's Sonic Four, which is available now. Yeah, so we're definitely have to cover all those in our Sonic episode. Um, which, by the way, um, just as a side note, I saw the pricing list um, or the discount list for next week um, or upcoming on Xbox Live Arcade. For those of you who want to try Sonic 4 and you didn't feel like paying $20 for it, um, it will be on sale for half price for 800 Microsoft points starting next week, starting next uh, Tuesday. It'll be the 22nd through the 28th, I think, will be the date that it will be only 800 points. For so get it next members? week if you want it. No, that's for gold members, right? Um, no, that's that's for, I think, well, maybe. Actually, you may be right. Yeah, yeah, it, it's the deal of the week. So yeah. it'll be the 22nd through the 27th. It says for 800 points, and since that's the deal of the week, then yes, that will be for gold members only. Oh, you're going to make me want to get a gold membership again. Mine's good for another two years, but <laughs> I'm a fanboy, what can I say? All right, next game we have is, was sort of Sega's answer to... The pre-rendered fancy graphics of Donkey Kong Country. You know, as cool as a concept as this was, it was not very well executed. Yeah, v Vector Man was sort of a is more of a platform shooter. It kind of reminds me of um, what like, like Gunstar Heroes or something like that. Where yeah, you, it's it's not so much a platformer as it is a shooter. And you all, <laughs> this is also sort of funny because the story is you have this Earth has been completely entrenched in garbage and junk, and it's basically unlivable so the humans have all departed in a space shuttle and left all these robots to clean out the mess so then when once they're finished they can come back so um does that sound familiar so there's this movie that i saw not long ago yeah maybe you've heard of it it's called wally -E. <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it vaguely rings a bell it's for the it's, it's something about the earth has been completely trashed and is full of garbage and this little robot is left to clean it all up so that the humans can then return to it and start fresh. Is that is that the movie you're talking about? No, that's 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 ridiculous. Who would make a movie of that? <laughs> yeah, especially Pixar. P Pixar would never do something like that. <sighs> Please. That's far too that's far too high level for them. Yeah, that they're too busy playing with toys. It's true. But yeah, yeah, anyway, the the main character on this isn't exactly um, conducive to a popular franchise mascot either. You're playing... He's, he's, uh, let's be frank, Vector Man was just... 
he was he looked like balls literally yeah he did. i mean they managed they pulled off a couple of cute little um animations with him you know he, he'll grab some of the balls off his arm and start juggling them or something like that but yeah he's basically this collection of these orbs that are just kind of floating together into this vaguely humanoid form and you can transform into other oddly shaped forms and you could go around shooting all the other robots and he, speaking of oddly shaped forms what uh, just the, the the rail car oh yeah <laughs> There's something that looks like he's supposed to be on roller skates, and there's another where he's like a jackhammer. And... It's sort of, sort of weird. <laughs> and if, and if you look at this entire um, game, this is the part where Sega tries too hard. Yeah, I don't even... Well, was this even a actual Sega game? It was done by Blue Sky. I don't know if it was a... Yeah, but Sega attached their name to it pretty heavily, I think. Well, like, yeah, because they had to compete with Donkey Kong. Right. Yeah. But I don't know, give, given the choice between a big gorilla and a garbage-collecting pile of orbs, I don't know, that, 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 that's a tough choice. <laughs> Plus, this game, I don't think save had a save feature like Donkey Kong Country did. So I think they had them beat in that department, too. Yeah, I, I gotta say, given the, the choice between orbs or bananas, I think the bananas are gonna have to take it for me. Yeah, as cool as robots are, uh, they're, they're, monkeys and bananas have a certain appeal. Da -da -ch. That, that's the Besides, we already that. we already have one cool robot in our lives. His name is Mega Man. Ah, uh, yes, Mega Man is much cooler. By the way, shameless plug: if uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time or haven't been with us since the beginning, go back and watch um, our episode, our our first episode, um, where we go into depth in the Mega Man series, uh, yes. and uh, it was a lot of fun. Episode one with Toe Jams, Mega Man's, and Kazooie. Oh, I, I have to take a minute to uh, respond to the chat room. They think this is a pre-recorded tape. With the us talking is live, the gameplay is tape. I don't have enough hands to try and play all these games live while also trying to work the video stream and talk. I just don't have the attention span. <laughs> Although, you know, if, uh, that would be kind of cool. Maybe we'll have to talk about that post-show. Yeah. All right, well, on to our next game, which is also somewhat of a shooter, though it takes a lot more of the platforming, adventuring aspect into it, and is also quite cinematic. This is my favorite video game series of all time. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the absolutely spectacular storyline, the technological aspect to all of it, or the fact that the protagonist is one badass chick. But this series is hands down my favorite of all time, and I cannot wait until we do our Metroid episode. 
Yes, yeah, so this is one of the franchises I never actually got into much until later, and I wish I had got into it earlier, because it is definitely an incredible game. Particularly the, the, the third one in the series. The first one was Metroid, and then you had Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, which was <clears throat> kind of iffy. But the, the Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo definitely took platforming to like a whole nother level. So I think you, you found a excellent summation of the Metroid games on Wikipedia. Yeah, um, the exact quote was Metroid let's see, where is it? Metroid combines the platforming of Super Mario Brothers and the exploration aspect of The Legend of Zelda with a decidedly darker atmosphere. And it's it really is an absolutely perfect perfect combination of the two worlds. I, I, I there's nothing that I don't like about this series. Absolutely nothing. And that's hard because I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty critical when it comes to game series that have been around this long, but there's I, I just Metroid is flawlessly executed. Well, because it has the great storyline that they actually um, deliver in a very cinematic way for a Super Nintendo game. It's got all the platforming that's done very well. And there's even all of the RPG exploration elements. So you can find and discover upgrades to Samus' power suit that give you tons of abilities and some of them and are completely a... optional you don't even have to find them all no and that that's one of the great things about this game especially um, Super Metroid did it well the original wasn't as as much because you pretty much had to have everything but in this game you could you could do it so out of order it was so it was very go at your own pace explore where you want and it was just such a beautiful, beautiful game. From the visuals, to the story, to the gameplay, to the music. The music yeah. for this series is... It's just... It still gives me chills when I listen to orchestrated versions of it. Uh-huh. Definitely the Legend of Zelda caliber music. This is sort of like the sci-fi version of Legend of Zelda. It really is. Yeah, and they, here they, they even make the timed uh, element of the level part of the story. Yeah. Because, oh, now it's going to self-destruct, so you have this much time to get to the end of the level instead of Oh, you, there, there's this arbitrary time limit that you have to get to the end of the level by. We don't know why, that's just how long you have. And then this, where it starts to, oh, where it starts to tilt, yeah. I, I love it. And I think the, the world that when you're exploring also changes dynamically. It does, and that's one of the other great things about it, is you can go explore an area, and when you come back to it, depending on what you've done in the game thus far, that area could be slightly different. Uh -huh. And it, just, it really keeps up well with the way that the story evolves during gameplay. And it adds this element of surprise, so even though you're going back across an area you've already been to, you have no idea if that place is now going to be infested with monsters, if it's going to be blown up, or if there are going to be new areas opened, or... You have no idea. And some things you'll you'll walk by some power ups that look completely obvious, but you're not able to get them yet. And then yeah. you have to go and do all kinds of other things, get other power ups and upgrades to your suit, and then you have to come back later to do it. It's it's just 
it keeps you moving forward because you know there's something right there, but you just can't quite reach it. Right. And this area here, um, I don't know how far the, the clip goes into it. Uh, it goes um, pretty far. Now, this, this giant empty shaft here is actually the remnants of the original game. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because this, this is where the you area defeat where you fought. Mother Brain. Yeah. Right. So when you go through here and you get to this point, um, because, again, even across titles, the planet is changing and evolving depending on what's going on. This is the original spot. Um, this is where you start in the original game. And things have changed ever so slightly because of the, the different dynamic and the storyline evolving. Yeah, but when you go back, that. you can watch and see where things have changed. Just so phenomenal. I'm going to make a confession. I've never played this game. <laughs> oh, Joel. Joel, Joel, Joel. You have got... Well, I, I will... You're not entirely I... the only one. I've only played little bits of this game. Because I never actually had it. But I'm definitely going to be playing it now. Because just, just the little bit I play, I've played of it before the show, I was totally hooked on it. I Yeah, this... This series, hands down, is just... my favorite video game series by far. I gathered that from the wet zone. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I do drool a little bit. Yeah, if... Joel, if you get a chance over the next couple of weeks to find an emulator and legally obtain a ROM yes of course um, you you should absolutely play this game it it will grab your attention for hours and hours I, I think when I get the new lappy um, I'm probably gonna try uh, looking at a lot of new things <laughs> yeah and it and if it uh It'll be at least three weeks before we get to Metroid, because we've got to do a Mario episode. Sonic. We're going to do a Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong episode. We're going to do a Sonic episode. We'll so we've got a, a we've got about too. a good month. Okay. Oh, Would we're going to know where I could get a copy. <laughs> huh? Would you know where I could get a copy there, Zach? Um, I have get some with, sources. Yeah, get with me after the, the the show. If if Joshua doesn't have it, then we'll we'll make it happen. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, if you are into um this ease and simplicity, you can get it on the Wii, on the Virtual Console, for eight bucks. Ah, uh, don't have a Wii. Yeah, I, I just bought one again. So I, I may <laughs> have to <laughs> I may have to buy this. All right, well, I think this brings us to our last game, which I originally wasn't going to cover because I was going to stick with more of the 2D platformers. But it's kind of hard to talk about platforming games without talking about this. Mario. Whoa! Hello. Okey dokey. Hey, Mario. Did you come to the castle? Oh yes, and Lakitu is actually a good guy on this one for once. That's right, I, I remember that. Th this may be the first game that where he where Lakitu turned over a new leaf and actually started helping Mario. Well, he was neutral. Remember in um, Super Mario Kart. Oh uh, yes, he, he was, was. He was the. He was essentially the referee. Yeah, and he'd, he'd pull you out of lakes or canyons and stuff like that.
you know, and I... Some people, uh... Some people will say that this sounds ridiculous, but this game changed the dynamic of platformers forever. Well, yeah, because this was the first of the 3D, the real 3D console game era, and everyone, no one knew how do you move a 2D platformer into three dimensions, because then now you have the camera to worry about, and you've got depth, height, width, I mean, you have all this stuff you gotta be concerned with, and this game basically nailed it. E even the even the camera on, on as old as the Nintendo 64, they got the camera surprisingly right, which the camera is probably the bane, or ha has been the bane of games since we've gone into the three dimension. There's like so, so many games that the your worst enemy is not the boss at the end or whatever is trying to keep you there. It's the stupid camera that can't keep a lock on where you are. Oh, I know. And on one of the first 3D platforming games, they've managed to get the camera perfectly right. They, I think they even, um, the gameplay, they added a little bit of a, I think a little bit of a Adventure Zelda vibe to it, because each level, you know, there's the overworld, which is the castle, and then each level has a, has a bunch of different stars they have to collect. And Yeah, it, it really added an exploration aspect to it that the series didn't have before. Yeah, because each, each time you went to a level, you had a certain objective, and to get a star, but there was a lot of times there were other stars hidden that you hadn't gotten to that objective yet, but you could still grab them if you wanted, so you could complete a level completely out of order and grab one of the last stars in the game or grab the middle one or whatever you wanted. You didn't have to follow a preset path yeah, it, it really it made the gameplay dynamic and the fact that you could go your own path. I mean, some stars didn't appear until you'd complete other, completed other objectives, but I know there was a lot of times where you could get, and just about any star that the world contained, you could get it whenever you wanted, so long as you knew where it was. Ah, uh, yes, I hate sliding levels. I'm always horrible at them, no matter what game they're in. I'm horrible at those slides. Uh, this is also the f one of the f was this one of the first ones where you actually have to go kind of toe to toe with Bowser? Yeah, that wasn't just a platform you could jump on and hit a switch. No, you actually you actually had to beat him. There was skill involved. It was crazy. Yeah, because I mean, all the other ones you never actually physically fought Bowser. I think you, there was always some trick to defeating him. I mean, some of them, you may, you, may, you may have jumped on them or something in some of the early ones. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, this, this you have to actually physically fight him. Where is that section? There well, we even in, like, uh, Super Mario Bros. 3, you didn't actually fight him at the end of the game. You had to wait for him to stomp the floor and fall into his own pit. Mm, yeah, so... So it's sort of like the original where you don't actually, unless you like had fireballs or something, but you don't actually 
physically fight him, you just sort of have to trick him into meeting his own demise. Although I gotta give him credit, he has gotten smarter over the years. being thrown into lava pits and against walls and bombs or whatever. And that knocked a little sense into him. Now he's even magic. He can come back bigger and meaner than ever out of lava. Ah, uh, yes. I know, for, for a clumsy giant dragon-like turtle thing, he's surprisingly agile. And isn't, you know, it's funny you give him that weird name, like, designation, but isn't he the strangest creature ever? Well, yeah, because he's the king of the Koopas, and the Koopas are essentially, like, turtles. So and then he's... you look at him, and he's, he's this big, giant guy with the turtle shell with spikes, but he's got, like, he's got, like, a red mohawk thing going on, and then he's got the horns, and Breeds it's like, fire. what the hell is this guy? Yeah, it's very weird. It's, it's like they took a turtle, a dragon, a triceratops, and just mashed them all together. Hey, don't mock him, Zach. I've seen what you look like. Hey, that, yeah, that's true. <laughs> At least I don't look like a turtle. I do look kind of like a dragon. In, like, the, the weirdest way possible. I've seen that picture that Joshua puts up of you. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty goofy looking. Yeah. Not that I can talk, but... No, no, I assure you, it is very goofy looking. Yeah, well, I think that brings us to the end of our show. And th this is only a small handful of uh, awesome platformers out there. We're, we're definitely going to doing some episodes on each individual series and go really in depth. But in the meantime, if you want to find some of our back episodes, you can go to the website retrogamesforever.com and I'll also have all of the links to info on the games and where you can buy them and stuff like that. And I occasionally, when I'm not prepping for the podcast, I also blog about retro games and news and such. Or I work on my book that I'm way behind on. So how about, how about you, Zach? Where can people find you and all your projects online? Um, well, the only project I'm working on online right now is trying to offend as many people as possible on my Twitter page. If you go to twitter.com slash Z underscore Williamson, you can find me there, where I generally deal out a healthy dose of IT anger and backlash every day. So you, you need, need to get one of the, or the couple of shirts I have on my little shirt shop, verbosities.com. I have one that was, it was sort of created by um, Dr. Kiki or Tom Merritt on TNT they, that says, life is short, offend people. Oh yeah, I love that. Or there's another one I made that is, says, you're blank it wrong. You're blanking it wrong, I, that's great. Yeah, insert your own expletive or noun or verb or whatever. The perfect response for any situation, especially in IT. It's true. So how about you, Joel? Are you, are you free to talk, or are there enemy troops around you? Oh, I'm, I'm bogged down. Oh, but hey, you want to quick tell people where <laughs> they can find you? They can find me on the Twitter as well, at uh, Hobbit from PA. And, and Zach does a good people all right and you can find me on twitter as well at joshua caleb 75 and you can also subscribe to this podcast on the blog or in itunes i still have not gotten into zune i don't know what their problem is it sort of 
ironic that Apple is more open than Microsoft, but I, you know what, I'm I'm gonna have to look into that this weekend and figure out what's going on with that. I'm now I'm starting to just get bugged with it. Yeah. All right. Well, that will do us for today. And make sure to catch us next week when I'm not sure what we're going to be covering, but it will be one of the franchises we talk about here. So thank you for watching.